What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. And today we're going to be talking to a guest that's been in the mix. He's been in the mix from cartels to gang life, his whole life, pretty much. From the feds, from multiple states all doing time in multiple states all across the country, and even in Mexico. He's done four years in Mexico. Man, oh man, ladies and gentlemen. This guy has seen and done way more than old death has done in his lifetime. All right, And, you know, I tell a lot of individuals that have a crazy and wild story to tell their story on their own channel. This dude has done multiple videos on other people's channels, and it's blown up. It's, I've seen him in my feed, my YouTube feed, multiple times, you know. So he does have a crazy story to tell, and I strongly suggest that at the end of this video, okay, if you rock with me, go rock with him. Hit that subscribe button on his YouTube channel and his Instagram. Follow him. I mean, this guy's been in it. All right, go support a real one. But another thing is in this, I wanted to say this before we got going, is some parts of the video, the audio is not synced to the lips. It's just some kind of internet connection. We tried three different occasions. We were having some technical difficulties with this. And I just decided to run with it. Screw it, you know. Uh, so I do apologize with that. You know, doing these interviews the way that I do it, sometimes there's going to be some technical difficulties, you know. But I hope you all enjoy. And, you know, once again, do not forget to go support the real ones, ladies and gentlemen. The real ones. All right, buddy. So what's your name and where are you from? JC. Born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Grew up on 26th Street, uh, Little Villita neighborhood. And uh, now I live out here in Phoenix, Arizona. That's what's up, man. All right. So uh, you came at me on Instagram and, and uh, hollered at me. And, you know, I've seen you already all over YouTube, you know. And... Um, Honestly, man, you got a YouTube channel right now, correct? Yeah. And what, what's the name of that YouTube channel? Wrong to Strong. Wrong to Strong. And, man, by the amount of videos I've seen of you lately in my feed and stuff, uh, and, and how well it's performing on other people's channels, your story, man, I, I'm surprised that you don't have more uh, subscribers over there, man. You, I don't know what's going on, man. You got to start uh, telling your story over there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I know it's like uh, you can only tell your story like so many times. I know, man. Like, I know, yeah. but you know, you, sometimes you got to tell it twice, man. If that means doing it on your own channel. But look, uh, before we get any further into this, I hope everyone on this channel, anyone who watches this, uh, this man has been through a lot. He's been through a lot, and he's doing some positive things out there. He's, he definitely doesn't glorify penitentiary in any way, and no one that comes onto this channel really glorifies it. But uh, go check out his channel. Hit that subscribe button and follow this man because this is inspiration, man. His story is crazy, and I don't even know where to begin, to tell you the truth. You, uh, we've already touched base a little bit. We had a little technical difficulties in the beginning, but... Uh, I mean, I'll let you start off, man. How did you get up into the mix, if you don't mind me asking? Because you've been to the penitentiary, feds, state, multiple states, and in Mexico, penitentiary. So I'm yeah. sure I'm sure plenty of people love to hear about the old uh, prison stories in Mexico. One thing that I uh, became good at was uh, being a criminal and getting caught. <laughs> my you, my yeah. uh, grandfather used to say... Uh, you're like the worst drug dealer I know. You get caught all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, someone said that came on my channel one time, said something, and it really stuck with me, man. It's not that we're criminals. It's just that we got a rebellious spirit, you know? We just want to do our own damn thing, you know? Yep. So, uh, But I understand where you're coming from, man. I lived a life of crime growing up, too. I'm still a young buck. And I happened to change my ways early on, but uh, so you were born and raised in Chicago, correct? Yes, sir. And tell me a little bit about that. Is that pretty much how everything started unfolding just from that area? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I grew up in a neighborhood that's very, very, a um, lot of crime, a lot of gangs. I mean, uh, being in a gang is pretty, uh, pretty natural in Chicago. You have to actually roll with somebody or, or else you you become a victim of the other gangs. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, they if you still live in an area and but you're not part of that gang, they see you around, they're still gonna 
treat you like you're part of that gang. So you you become a victim if you're not part of, you know, with if you're not rolling with somebody. Well, let me ask you this, man. Is there individuals? Because, you know, uh, a lot of people don't know exactly how projects work and bad areas. They don't know that sometimes it's just kind of like that's the way of life out there. Is there anyone out there that you've seen that was actually doing it? I guess you could say lone wolfing it and actually, you know, living? Uh, not really. I mean... There was guys that really didn't turn Latin Kings or didn't like gangbang, but they hung around with us. So if something ever happened to them, we would have their backs. You know what I mean? Like uh, they just never made the full commitment because they know they know what comes with with the territory. But they would come and hang out with us at parties and and you know show a lot of love. And and sometimes you know I hate to say it like this. Sometimes those are the ones that you know end up you know, dying and drive-bys and stuff like that. And that's where they say, you know, innocent victims because, you know, they just happen to be there at the wrong time, wrong place, you know? So, you know, um, not too many people though. I mean, like I said, especially in neighborhoods where I grew up at, like you kind of have to just go with it. Like there's, I mean, I told you the story about, you know, I was like nine or 10 and I was actually saving up to buy my first gun. So I could, you know, protect myself because you never know when somebody was going to roll up on you, and you had to be ready. Yeah, I understand. Crazy, it's it's uh, uh, sorry. You good? Uh, uh it, it just it's part of uh, Chicago. Like you know, it, it's a uh, Chicago's always been bad. People just now they're putting it on the in, in the news and everything, but Chicago is always been really really bad even my dad my dad used to hang around with Lane kings and some of his best friends you know died and that's what made him get his shit together you know and get out yeah but you know it's always been bad you know you know a little something about uh california and stuff like that correct yeah 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 i did a lot of time with a lot of homies okay would you say the gang activities out there is uh which one do you think would be worse man chicago la or california I mean, Cali has its its his, its areas, but um, honestly, man, I don't I don't think there's a comparison to Chicago just because of the guns, man. Like the the guns, and there's always been a very heavy heavy uh, cartel presence. So there's always been a lot a lot of money. Wherever there's a lot of money, there's gonna be a lot of evil. There's gonna be a lot of you know a lot of killings, a lot of a lot of a lot of guns. Just a lot of a lot of shit happening. I mean. LA and it's like its, right there in the center, yep. too, you know? <laughs> but, you know, L.A. had its time. L.A. And LA was really, really bad in the 80s, you know, early 90s. And then I think, you know, Chicago kind of like took over because, uh, you know, uh, it got really bad over there where it just, you know, when you start making millions of dollars, people start fighting for every inch of that oh, yeah. turf. You know what I mean, sure. so for sure. It, it got a little crazy. All right. Well, check it out, man. So. The first time you started doing time was in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so what are some of like the charges that you went for? My first one was uh, unlawful use of a weapon. I was uh, shooting at a car and the cops were like down the block. So they, they caught me like right away. I tried to run, but never been a good runner. Yeah. Got caught. So how long have you been out of prison? I've been out for two years, six months. Still on papers? Yeah, I still. I, my PO likes everything that I'm doing right now, so she might let me off. If she does, she'll submit the paperwork in October. If not, I have three more years to do. Well, that's not too bad, you know. But uh, but still, anything I mean, can I, happen. I've been on probation since I've been 16. Years I know, old. I know, man. I'll never forget the day I was released. I say it all the time. It's like you're reborn, man. I, it's unlike any other feeling. I can't even explain it, but it's crazy. How you can feel like that just from a piece of paper saying, hey, you ain't got to come see me no more. <laughs> you ain't even got to talk to me no more. It's like the best breakup you ever had in your life, you know? Exactly. But, um, yeah, you'll get there, man. Especially with everything that you're doing now, man. All this positivity and stuff and working out. Man, hey, you work out with some heavy hitters, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, I'm going to talk a little more about that uh, towards the end. But let's jump back into this old penitentiary mindset, man. When you first... Well, 
what what prison did you go to first? Was it uh, over there in Chicago? Yeah, I went to, uh, uh, if I'm correct, if I remember right, I went to uh, Springfield. It was like uh, medium. There was a lot of the guys there. Um, Would you say um, it was treacherous for people that weren't weren't uh, affiliated with anything in there? Um, you know, honestly, like the dudes that weren't affiliated there um, were dudes that were moving big time dope. So, you know, they didn't have to really worry about anything. So, you know, yeah. uh, they they uh, they were plugged up with somebody, if not not the Kings, the Cobras. They were plugged up with somebody. So they 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 had their ass covered pretty much. So, yeah. you know, they they could pretty much roam around with with them, you know. So, yeah, it's very, very different. man. That's one thing that I learned. It's crazy because every prison that I've been to in different areas of the United States or even Mexico, segregation, you know, exists. That's what I was going to ask you next. Was there anything compared to the segregation in, like, let's say, California, you say Arizona? I mean, like, in, in, in Arizona, when I did time in Arizona, they're like, I walked in and they're like, hey, who, you're gonna, who are you going to sit with? You're going to sit with the Mexicans or the Chicanos? And I was like, shit, isn't it the same thing? And they're like, <laughs> nah, homie. They're like, you know, you either sit with, with the Paisas or with the AZ cats. And I was like, but I kind of feel like it's the same thing. But they segregate even more. And in Chicago, you know, we have black land kings. Yeah. So they like, there's really, and it's more segregated by gang than it is by race. Yeah. Because, you know, there's not that much racism in Chicago. You know, it's not, it doesn't roll like that. Yeah, that's how it is over here in Virginia, man. Uh, and that, by far, is probably the number one, let's say, when it comes to politics and prison, that is the number one key to all the prisons is how they're segregated, you know. And that's a major difference from prisons from, let's say, the east and the west. I'm sure you know that. Uh it's just a whole nother world in the prison system out there. The further you go out west, um, and that, and when I first found that out, man, it was a complete shocker to me. You know, when I saw you know the stuff on the movies and stuff about California prisons and stuff, I would think, okay, this is just movies. They can't be this racially segregated. And then sure enough, they are. You know, it was it was it was pretty crazy. It was it was uh, an eye opener for me, but. So you 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 start your dirt starts in Chicago, man, and it kind of leads to Arizona and probably other places in Mexico. How the hell did you end up in Mexico, man? How was that? Was that? I'm guessing that was by far the worst out of all of them. Yes, it yeah. was by far the worst, the most violent, the most drugs, um, just the most, you know. Um, How many I'm white saying, guys or black guys did you see in there? There was one white guy. There was one black guy. Really? And, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. bet they were homies in there, man. I always remember Mike. <laughs> Mike was from Detroit, and the black guy was uh, uh he was from a, a neighborhood on the west side of Chicago. Wow. And, Wonder what they were in there for. Yeah, they were in there for drugs, man. But they lived out there. They were probably like on the run or something. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. But um, yeah. I mean, I I got there, and um, you know. Ten minutes in, I had already got stabbed for my shoes. Some, um, some Jordans, correct? That's what you yeah, told me earlier. Yeah, my Jordans, you know, and, and um, you know, it was a very, very violent, violent uh, prison, man. I would not say for the least, like it was really, really bad for like sex offenders and like uh, anybody that hurt women or children. Um, I seen some pretty horrible stuff happen there. Were that, they were they torturing people in there, man? Because I seen some videos of some cats from oh, Brazil, yeah, yeah. man. I mean, I, I saw one of the stories Jesus. on uh, Big uh, Hurt's channel. Um, uh, uh, child molester went in, and they were waiting for him because they put him on the newspaper be the day before he even got brought into the prison. Yeah, and they were waiting for him, and it's crazy because I still remember everything to this day how. You, you couldn't even see him because there were so many people around him just beating him with yeah. bikes yeah. and stuff. And then when he he came out of the crowd, like his hands, you could tell they were all broken because they were like moving like jello. Yeah. He couldn't even set them down. He had a broom like all the way up him. 
Like, it, it was bad, man. They ended up hitting him with a machete in the back. But it was, um, they, they did their own justice in there. And, you know, you didn't, you, uh, you didn't get involved when the, the prison, you know, took care of their business, whatever it was. But it was very, very segregated in there also. It went by cartels and by states. And whoever you know ran, whatever in the prison. Was there a lot of beef in between different cartels or whatever in there? Um, not really. Just because everybody stuck to their turf, everybody sold in their own units. You know, whatever they were selling. It was um. You ever watch that movie Get the Gringo with Mel Gibson? Yeah, yeah. It, that's a right perfect now. example of what the prison was. Really? Yeah, perfect wow. example. They could not get it down to the team more. Than that prison, than that Damn, movie. Damn! Now that you said that, I gotta watch it again, and refresh my memory. It's been a while since I watched. It. I'd say at least a good four months. But damn, that's cool, man. They did good on that. I guess. I guess yeah, they yeah. got some good intel for that one. No, it was down to the T. Like even the richest guy living there, running the whole show, he lived on top. You know, I I worked for the main guy at the prison where I was at. He used to like uh, he liked Americans because he knew that we were hustlers. So, like, I would sit out there for, you know, all day just, you know, selling shit. And uh, we would be good with, like, people. So, like, he used to like to, it was me, this other guy named Max, and uh, one of my guys that I, I still talk to to this day, um, uh, uh, Ricardo, that uh, we're really good friends that we used to be out there hustling all day. And all right, well, what, was, what is your nationality? You, you full, full uh, Mexican or what? I'm Mexican. Okay, full. Mexican. full. Now, did they tell, could they tell that you were an American? Oh, yeah, they don't like us, man. They <laughs> so you, us how did they tell, much. though? I mean, what, what kind of... What? I mean, you, you can tell by the way that we walk, man, how we dress. I mean, we're very, very different, man. I mean, uh, it's a different style. and I, Just uh, give off a different vibe, huh? Yeah, different vibe. I mean, we're a little bit more, I don't want to say arrogant. No, I shouldn't say arrogant. I should say more like... Confident, maybe? Confident, you know yeah. what I mean? We, we walk different, man. Yeah. Like, Especially when you're from the streets, I mean, so, you know, I, I got there pretty hardcore and it took me, it took me a little bit of time to kind of settle down, man, and um, uh, kind of go with the vibes there and, and learn how the people are over there because they play different games and, and they just, they, it's a very, very different culture. So, you know, I had to get used to it. Yeah. How was the white dude handling it in there? He was doing good, man. He, he knew was Spanish? a hustler, you know. His Spanish was good. Oh, okay. He was a good hustler. He was I, always uh, up to no good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how does uh, how would you say someone would last well in there that didn't know any Spanish at all? I mean, I look at it like this: if you're street smart and you know how to drive around accidents, <laughs> yeah. You you can pretty much make it anywhere because Mike didn't know Spanish when he got there. That's a good that's a good answer too, man. I like that. You, you know, uh, you gotta learn how to drive, man. And, and that's in, all it is. And in, in places like that, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was in Florida, in the feds, there was a guy there that was doing a life sentence. He was involved with the whole like cocaine cowboy stuff in, in Miami. And he had a couple of bodies on him. And he was an old guy. And everybody was afraid of him because he would always stab him because he would be in a bad mood. And his name was Charlie. And, man, he was like the nicest guy ever, man. I used to see him, <laughs> kick with him on the yard. I love hanging around with old dudes because they have so much story, so much shit to share yeah. that I want to listen to, you know? Yeah. You and, know, um, kill, killers need a, a little buddy every now and then, too, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody needs a little loving, man, you know? <laughs> so, you know, I know how to drive, man. And pretty much when I got to know him better and I knew he wasn't having a good day, just keep I, it was just, I would steer away. I would, like, bust a Yui to go the other <laughs> yeah. way around. <laughs> yeah. You just, you just kind of lagged out a little bit when you were doing that. It looked like you were in a music video. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, man, I understand exactly. And you know what? I honestly can say I probably survived every, you know, every day in prison without being physically harmed, you know, without, you know, except for like a fight here and there, simply because I knew how to drive, man. 
And I, I can I, that, that's why I said that's a good answer that you said because if you can if you can talk right, you can drive right, man, it'll take you a long long way in many places in life, you know. How long you end up doing in Mexico? I did four years over there. Four years, man, and you came back. Was that before you went to the feds or after? Yeah, it was before I went to the feds. So they used to have a uh, it, it was called the American Exchange Program, and what uh, United States used to do, they used to exchange. Uh, Mexican inmates from United States to uh, Americans, and they would do the swap at the border. Okay. And it was a program that was, you know, uh, working to bring Americans home because uh, the treatment over there in the prisons was really bad. You know what I mean? So a lot, of, a lot of American consuls were putting in a lot of like paperwork on it. So I waited four years. They went and got me, and. Uh, uh, they brought, they flew me into El Paso, Texas, Latuna Federal Prison. It used to be a medium back in the early 90s, and that's where they received me, and that's where the, I entered the federal system for the first time. And how was that? Uh, it was uh, when the feds were actually the feds, when the feds actually had, uh, you know, real people that deserved federal time, not crackheads and, like, People with guns, like nowadays, the yeah. feds are are garbage. Yeah, you get a damn sawed off shotgun, you're going to the feds. Yeah, yeah. like the feds now, there 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 wasn't even really not even that many gangs in the feds back then. There was a lot of high profile right. cases. Yeah, yeah, high profile cases. I'll never forget because I was young. I was I was young, young when I went in there, and I remember seeing these guys with bathrobes. You know, uh, we used to have a uh, Wendy's for fucking lunch. <laughs> and, uh, chocolate, uh, uh, real milk, and did you want waffles or pancakes? The feds were like sweet back then. Yeah, yeah. But, you know what I mean? Like fed time. Yeah. And a lot of Italians in there, a lot of like big time leaders. Yeah, and you learned a lot in there, I'm guessing? Oh, yeah, man. I came out with a PhD in drug dealing, man. <laughs> well, look, how, mu well, how much time you end up doing in the feds? What'd you go there for? Okay, so... I got put into the federal system because of my crime in Mexico. So when I got transferred to the United States, my crime turned into a international, it was international drug smuggling because I was trying to bring the drugs into the United States. So when I went into, uh, when they flew us into El Paso, Texas in the plane, I, I looked at all the Americans that were there and they all looked really bad shape. They must have got abused, they must have got beat up. A lot of bad shit must have happened to them and they must have seen a lot of things that that you know they didn't they didn't get over it. Yeah. So when we got to the federal prison, they put us in a room and they started showing us movies about Vietnam vets coming back from the war. They didn't call it PTSD back then. Yeah. They didn't have they didn't have that I guess that diagnose or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So so I raised my hand up and I was like, you know, I need to talk somebody to somebody, and they took me in the room and the counselors and the psychiatrists uh, went in there and they're like, you know, what's up? And I was like, well, you know, every day in there I got beat, every day in there they try to rape me. I I played it. I'm not gonna lie, I played it a little bit more <laughs> because I already knew what they were looking for. Yeah. And um. Like I said, my criminal mind kicked in, and uh, I ended up getting seven years off my sentence for pain and suffering. Can't so be that. I, <laughs> Can't be I ended that. up getting released like uh, a week later. Wow, what are the odds of that, my friend? I bet you were, I bet you were uh, leaping for joy from that, huh? I, I was for about 10 minutes until the shuttles were waiting for me in front when I got out. <laughs> That's the worst feeling in the world, man. <laughs> worst damn feeling. And what happened after that? Where'd you go after that? Man, this is, you can, you do have a book coming out too. Yes, I have a book. That's why I can't like say too much. <laughs> yeah, don't, you know, I don't want you saying too much. I tell people that all the time that I've had on the channel, man. You know, I like to bring, you know, uh, I'm not trying to say anything by any way any one ways of doing things but when i have someone on and i can tell they have a lot to tell i'll probably bring them on once or twice yeah, and yeah. Then, hey go make your channel bro you got to tell your story there you know what i mean i want people to hear 
on your own stuff. So, uh, yeah, the book I'm sure is going to be wild as hell just based oh, upon man. everything that you're saying right now. Life, man. Uh, you know, so when I got up to the gate, I was all happy. I had my bus ticket. I had my little, you know, 80 bucks that they gave me. And I was excited. And I seen the two sheriffs and I was like, oh, that must be my ride right there. And, you know, they were like, Julio Almanza? And I was like, yes, sir. They are like, you're under arrest. You're wanted, you're wanted in Chicago, Illinois, so you will be being extradited. Dang. So they ended up taking me to the um, El Paso uh, County Jail in downtown El Paso. And they're like, oh, we're moving you to the Annex Prison. The Annex Prison is a prison that they have for El Paso inmates that's underground. And I was like... Why are you moving me? I'm supposed to be released tomorrow because Illinois is, you know, not coming to get me. They're like, well, they must be coming to get you because that's why we're moving. I was like, all right. I get on the bus. They move me, take me over there. Next day, they call me for release. Okay. They release me in the middle of the desert. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. <laughs> I walked up to the highway. And, like, all I could see, you know, when it's really hot, all you see is, like, little, like, it's like a mirage or something like that. Like, and I, I, I didn't even know what way to walk. So I walked back to the prison, knocked on the door, <laughs> and the, the guard opens up the door mad, and he's like, if you don't get out of here, you're trespassing, we're going to lock you up again. Damn. In those 10 minutes, a lowrider pulls in. Oh, Damn and picks up this dude from the El Paso jail. And this is the first time, man, that I, I started like seeing like homies. Like in Chicago, Mexicans don't dress like that, don't tattoo their faces, uh, a very, very different different style. Yeah. We, we took more like on the Italian mob kind of style in the gangs and stuff like that over yeah. there. And, um, so this guy's covered up in tattoos from his fucking face and everything, man. And, you know, uh, he stops in the low rider and he's like, what's up, homie? You need a ride? And I was like, well, yeah, I mean, I'm not from here. I don't know where I'm going. I need to get to like downtown El Paso. So he's like, jump in. So I jump in, man. All these dudes are tatted up, man. And I'm like, man, these mother kill me, man. I was, <laughs> I was like terrifying for me you know and yeah they take me into the into the el paso uh city and um you know uh, uh they were actually pretty good dudes man they took me to the house partied a little bit then i got on the bus oh you, par you party with them a little bit huh yeah damn right <laughs> <laughs> well that's cool man uh i couldn't imagine getting released from somewhere and just having to walk down the damn desert you know that that's craziness, but uh, let me see here, man. Well, look, let's start talking about some of the positive things. Well, I want to ask you this. You've been through it, man. You've seen gangs your whole life and stuff like that. Uh, what made you turn your life around, man? What would you say? Would you say this is this is this is a good question. Would you say gang life is a negative or a positive? I'm, I know there could be both ways, okay? It could it could go somewhat both ways, but if you were to say one outweighs the other, which one would it be? Would you say gang life is more of a negative or positive? It's, it's definitely a negative, man. And, you know, um, uh, it's, it's fucked up because, like, you know, they, they take a lot of the youth and they, they, they use them, you know, to their, you know, uh, benefit. And... Um, my my uh, whole mentality uh, of change came when um, I, I went to a federal prison in uh, Florida, and I went over there to do the the RDAP program, where you actually, you know, back then they were giving you two years halfway house, two years off your sentence, so a four year total off your ten years. Yeah, I've been hearing about this before. So you know, I went out there, and you know. I kind of feel that God, man, I, I shouldn't say kind of feel, I know that God's always had my back. I always say that my guardian angel is probably like got a broken wing, a punctured lung. Like he's all messed up, man. Yeah. Cause 
he's got he's had my back through so many things that it's crazy but yeah. i made it to the program you know they flew me out there and you know when i was when i got there i was praying i was praying to god i was like please please let there not be land kings there please let me do my 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 drug program because you can't have no gang affiliation if you have to live in the unit for nine months. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like a double-edged sword. You know, I get there and uh, everybody knew who I was because of uh, my, my, uh, my bro Cato. You know, he was, he was king of kings and me and him are really tight. So, uh, you know, I get there and uh, he, they hit me with my new Air Force Ones, my little big ass bag with my, you know, my jogging pants, my food, everything. And I wasn't thinking, man, at first. So I take all the stuff and I'm like, yeah, man, I'm set up, blah, blah, blah. It kind of moves so fast, don't it? Yep. Yeah. So then they're like, hey, we'll see you on the yard. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, you know, I go out to the yard and I'm like, and yo. They, they're yo. all in with this program? No, nope, they're doing time. So they mix in the individuals doing the program with the cats doing time. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's so pretty you, crazy. So you could crash. Yeah. There's so many people, dog, that I've seen crash like a month right before finishing the program. Yeah, it's crazy. You're lagging out bad, man, but I'm going to run, keep running with it. Okay. I apologize to the people that watch this. I don't know what's going on. It's just one of those days got bad connection, but I'm listening. I'm trying to focus. Uh, but that's crazy as hell, you know, that they, they set you up like that. It shouldn't be like that, man. Uh, did it turn out well for you? Well, you know, um, I started getting through the program. At first, I was out there hanging out, being a knucklehead. And then um, everything changed, man, when I started going to school, man. And uh, I started wanting to change, man. I wanted to, to get better, man. I wanted to, like, I got tired of being in prison. Yeah. And, that's all it know, is, man. Once you get tired of something, that's it. I went out to the yard, I remember, one day, and I, I told the guys, I was like, hey, you know what? I'm sitting it down. I don't want to do this no more. Um, you know, I need your blessings. I, I don't I don't want to gangbang no more. I don't want to be king no more. And the guy that was running the yard really didn't like me because a lot of the other guys liked me a lot. Like, you know, I, I have a gift where people take a liking to me. Yeah. And he didn't like me. He felt jealousy against me. Yeah. So he was like, no, nah, we're not letting you sit down. And I was like, honestly, dude, I was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm sitting it down. Like, whatever, whatever it is. And he told me, he's like, there's going to be consequences. I said, do what you got to do, man. So I got up, went to work. And this is what I was telling you earlier that God had my back. But I was at work and one of the uh, vice lords came up running to me. And he's like, hey, they got your homies. And I was like, what? And I ran out to the window. They were escorting 25 of the Land Kings out because they were under um, investigation for cell phones. So that night they took half of them out, including that guy that didn't like me. And, uh, you know, I came out the next day to the yard and everybody's like, yo, we want, we want you to have the keys to the yard. I was like, hell no. Nah. I was like, I'm trying to do this program. Man. I'm trying to get home to my family, man. Yeah. You know, and um, I was like, if you guys want to hang out, do like, you know, positive shit, work out, go to church, you know, go to school, stuff like that. I'm down for it, but I'm not, I'm not going to meet on the yard and, and, and waste my time. I'm not going to waste my time cooking food and watching TV. I'm trying, I'm trying to get better, man. And, and that's what I did, bro. I, I ended up becoming a personal trainer in there. Um, started reading a lot about muscles and different ways of training and uh just did my time man did my time in a real positive way that made me want to change more uh, i ended up covering up my my gang tattoo on my neck and it, it's funny because a guard caught me when i was getting my my tattoo done and i could have got kicked out the drug program because of that but he probably respected the fact that you were getting it covered Exactly. Yeah. He was like, you know what, Almanza? I see nothing but positive shit in you, man. He's like, just finish it up fast. That's what's up, and, man. The Lord you know, works in mysterious ways, my friend. 
Man, man. Trust me, I've seen some crazy stuff in action myself that happens that happened throughout my life, man. Just unexplained stuff that's like, God. You know, it's crazy. But uh well that's excellent, man. Nothing but positivity. Uh tell me a little bit of what you got going on now, man. I got I know you got probably plenty more stories. We're gonna we're probably gonna wrap this up towards the end. I wanna hear what you got going on and what we can do to try to get you well, and selling a little more. I got my YouTube channel, Ron the Strong. Uh, what do you talk head- about on there? Uh it's all different stuff, man. I have, you know, motivational stuff. I have, uh, you know, um, shit that I went through, you know, PTSD, uh, depression, how I dealt with it, um, fitness stuff. Uh, Ron, the Ron the Strong channel is, is more than just like, you know, I do powerlifting. I, I hold two state records right now. I compete in August again. So there's, it's a mixture of fitness, motivation, you know, uh, uh, I don't call myself a felon no more. So, you know, how did I start my company? Uh, all stuff like that, man, just to help guys like me, you know, get motivated and see that it, it is it is possible to, to, you know, dream and chase your dreams and get them done. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Um, and what else you got? You got any other kind of social media? I know you got Instagram. Got I got Instagram, Wrong the Strong. My Facebook is Wrong the Strong. My nonprofit is Wrong to Strong. I work with inmates. Right now, I just submitted a grant for $1.5 million for me to step into the prisons in Arizona and uh, make these uh, uh, help these guys become certified personal trainers. We're waiting to see if I did it or not. That'd be amazing. Yeah, so uh, waiting on that. My books are about to drop. I got two books dropping in about six to eight months. Yeah. Um, my brand, my clothing brand, I mean, I stay busy, man. I don't even sleep sometimes. Uh, training, eating. I have a, you know, a baby that, you know, I'm learning to be a father. <laughs> you know? I know that's right, man. Ain't nothing better, though, man. That's our legacy. Yeah. Uh, so everybody, you know, if there's any kind of fitness individuals out there or just want inspirational uh, stuff to hear, you can go check out his channel and his Instagram. You got you got more followers than me on Instagram. And look, you've been in the mix, man. You've been around some uh, honchos out there. You even ran with uh, some of the DMX crew, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, I you... was a Phoenix Rough Rider for a long time. DMX is my daughter's godfather. That's wild, man. And do you still keep in contact with him on a regular basis? Uh, no, nah, man. Me and him kind of had a little fallout. Like, you know... Pretty much nowadays, man, if you really don't have nothing positive to bring to my life, um, I really don't have time for you, man. And, and uh, I keep it pretty real. And uh, I'm just very transparent when it comes to that stuff because I just can't take the chance of getting pulled back into to something that, you know, it's cost me half of my life, you know? Yeah, man. Three more years, you'll be off in papers. You'll be off them sooner. Mark my words, yes. my friend. Mark my words. And, uh, man, you just got an amazing story. And, honestly, it's hard to – ask you certain things because there's so much you know there's so much that i still want to ask you like how are the showers how was food in mexico all this stuff you know i got so many questions i could ask you and i definitely want to bring you on again and hopefully next time we ain't got too bad of an internet connection i don't know if it's because from what they're doing over here or not but uh look man i appreciate you coming on to the show and it's just another miracle story, man. And it's crazy how a lot of individuals that I don't even expect to be talking about, oh, you know what? God helped them in some mysterious ways, man. And they acknowledge it. Even with, through my channel, God works in mysterious ways, my friend. And I hope nothing but success for you in the future, or your children or a child and your old lady, man. Uh, leave the link. Send me all the links before you go and i'll make sure to pin it in the comment section and description of the video and i hope everyone on this channel that watches this video go check out and support your content as well thank you brother appreciate it man hey anytime man uh you do nothing but stay safe out there and stay free i'm gonna have to come and see you man next interview we'll probably do over there man hey that'd be nice man virginia beach (laughs) you ever been to virginia beach never been there ain't shit out here I know a lot of blood from over there. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bloods. There is a lot of bloods, my friend. That's how I speak about it a lot on my channel. That's who <laughs> that's who ran the prison system, you know, really bloods and crips, but 
But yeah, man, I appreciate you coming on the show, and I hope you have a great rest of your night, man. I hope to have you back on as well. Appreciate it, brother. Thank uh, you, man. All right, buddy. Take it easy.